you are an agent that is saying this is a tough market, then stop it because it's not. There's still plenty of market. There's still plenty to be made. It's the agents that don't have enough relationships in the marketplace that are going to struggle. But this is really good for us because what happens in a market like this where listings shrink is I've got agents in my office and what they're doing, because it's so hard to buy, they're leveraging the use of buyer's agents in the marketplace. You're helping a client out, you're gonna get their business later, and you're getting a referral fee if you've organized it with the agency. Don't get comfortable, because getting comfortable is when you get slaughtered. As listings get shorter and the market gets a bit tighter, the biggest agents with the greatest teams are going to win the most. So if you wanna be a high-performing agent, you need to be... So you've mastered the market, but now you want to start winning for yourself. I'm Daniel Lee. Some know me as real estate's funny guy, but in the Get Keen podcast, we get down to business and explore what gets people really keen, how to get the most out of your real estate career, how to build a successful business and live the best life for yourself and your family. We'll uncover how to be hugely successful in real estate, setting you up to get keen and make the next big move in your life we're going to talk about the market conditions right now. Okay, we're in a market I have never seen in my 15 years. Actually, it's more than that. It's 17 years in real estate now. All right, we have a market that is still really good. Okay, and I want to make this really clear. If you are an agent that is saying this is a tough market, then stop it because it's not. All right, you haven't seen a hard market yet. Yeah, listings are short. All right, and that's probably because we haven't seen much of a change. There's been a bit, but there hasn't been much of a change in buyer activity since the rise of interest rates. And usually when interest rates creep up a lot, we see a lot of, a lot of buyers exit the market and then properties, you know, the, the, the supply outweighs the demand and then properties stay on the market for a long time. And then we're in what is called a tough market where properties are harder to sell. There's not as many people coming along to the properties. There's not as many offers being made. And when the offers are made, they're too low and the sellers won't sell. That is traditionally what a tough market is. Now, this is not a tough market. If you went through uh, the global financial crisis in 2008 and perhaps the floods in Brisbane in 2011, you will know what a tough market is, all right? That was a market when no one wanted to buy. Okay, I remember when I first got into real estate in 2000 and, whoa, 2007, I came in right at the end of a booming market. This is a funny story, I'll tell you. So I got in and I was a sales associate junior. I'd never done anything in real estate, right? I had a shitty sales job and then I got into real estate and I was part of a team. And I showed up on my very first Saturday and I couldn't believe my eyes. We were selling this dodgy little two bedroom, one bathroom unit right next to the train tracks. And there was water dripping from the roof into the kitchen. And I'm telling you, and this is no word of a lie, there was a lineup outside the street around the corner. There was about 59 inspections on this property or something. And by the end of that half an hour open home, we had people faxing in offers. All right, this is, remember, I'm older than you think. Um, we, are, <laughs> we had people faxing in offers and, and emailing in offers. We had about 10 offers on the, the crappiest property I've ever seen. You know what I thought? A dog could sell real estate. This is the easiest thing ever. Put a cardboard box up and say for sale on it and you'll get yourself a contract and have a property sold in a day. It was like that. That was the best market I'd ever seen until 2021, okay? Three weeks later, there was this murmur about trouble in America, you know, on the news. And then the bank, the Lehman Brothers Bank, and it fell and we were all like, oh, what's happening in America? And then all of a sudden, this big news of, a massive global financial crisis happened and we didn't really know what we were in. The whole of Australia was, wasn't related to us, but our whole market shat itself, okay? Every industry, every business went through some troubled time. And real estate, let me tell you, I went from, we went from doing those open homes of, you know, 50, 70 people in the worst properties to within a week, no word of a lie, I'm not even kidding, we went within a week, we had like one or two people coming to beautiful properties, well-priced, beautiful properties, one or two people, no one wanted to buy. And this kept up. I remember at this first open home, 
where we had no people come through, I absolutely couldn't believe it. I was like so embarrassed to call the owner and say, no one showed up to your open home. I couldn't believe it. I was dreading the call. Now, we, we've all experienced this now and since then and in tougher markets. But I, I didn't know what a bad market was. I didn't know anything different to what I was, what I had experienced in those first three weeks. And then for the next two years, I went through the hardest market I have ever seen, right? Where we would list beautiful properties. And, and, and first of all, I was on someone's team, but then I went out on my own um, after about a year and a half and started listing my own properties. And you would list a uh, you know, a beautiful, regular, you know, four bedroom, two bathroom, standard family home and no one would show up or like three or four people would come and no one would want to buy it. And, you know, you'd have to have that property on the market for two months and you'd have to have all these price conversations and get the price down and then finally you'd sell it. Eventually everything sells if the owners really want to sell it. But, you know, all the owners are dissatisfied with their price. The buyers will think they're paying way too much when they're not. Everyone's scared, you know, really low office. It was a terrible market. And then, and then it slowly built up. And then the floods hit in 2011 and everyone's house, it was low, went underwater. And then that freaked everyone out. And the market shut itself again for another couple of years. Now that was a hard market. I'm telling you, since COVID, right, COVID shut down the market for about six weeks and then it turned up the market full beam, flames were on. It was crazy. You remember if you were in it, all of a sudden, everything was selling within uh, a day. So the thing is, when you're in one of these bad markets, that's when you really hone in on your skills as a real estate agent, okay? You actually have to become way better, all right? And if you go through a tough market, which we're not even in right now, okay? So if you haven't been in a tough market, you're not even at your best yet. Because when you go through a tough market, man, you got to get so good. You have to be so resilient. You have to get so good at talking about price with your sellers and educating them on the market. You have to actually try when you're talking to buyers and get them to make an offer. In this market, you just show someone, show someone the property, they like it, they make an offer, they'll probably come up and you sell it. You don't actually even have to explain why this property is better than that property so much. You know, you have to get, you really have to hone in on your skills as a salesperson in a poor market. Um, and then COVID came around, all right, 2020, 21. Oh my God, if you were in the market at that point, you made a lot of money, all right? Even the, you know, even the agents that hardly made much, they all of a sudden were making a great income. The people that were making great income were making a ton of money in this market because everyone wanted to sell because they all of a sudden made hundreds of thousands of dollars. There were so many buyers in the marketplace. Money was giving out like that it was popcorn and everyone could buy whatever they want and everything was selling in a day. And it was the most amazing market I had seen since 2007, all right? Now, since then, interest rates have climbed up about you know 3% or more, probably more than that. What were they? They were 2.5% when I bought um, back in that time. And now you're paying about 6.5%, maybe 7% for, a, for a, you know, a loan on a house. And usually what that does is it, 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 it stops buyers from coming. But for some reason, the buyers are still there. That's really weird. I haven't seen that before, okay? Because interest rates are supposed to go up and the buyers are supposed to, you know, piss off a little bit and it kind of levels the market out a bit. But what we're finding is there's still heaps of buyers there, right? And sellers who want to sell who may have bought three or four years ago, they can't even buy their own house now. Right? They don't even have the money to buy their own house. And they've got so much capital stuck inside their current house. They don't have enough cash to be able to just go and buy another house and then, or they don't feel comfortable, you know, leveraging on their current house to buy something else and then, you know, have two houses at a given time. A lot of people feel more comfortable buying first and then selling, but they can't buy because no one will sell because these people can't sell because it's too hard to buy. You know what I'm saying? It's a really weird market. So what we're seeing, and I'm sure if you're listening to this, you agree with me, how many people right now do you have who are saying, yeah, I'm ready to sell as soon as I buy something, but they can't buy something, so they're not gonna sell. It's a, it's a funny little thing that we're stuck in in the market. Don't worry, it'll clear itself out in a little while. But this is still a good market, guys. And if you're sitting here thinking it's a bad market, get your mindset straight, guys. 
It's kind of tougher because there's not that many, not as many listings out there, but there's still plenty of market. There's still plenty to be made. I still know all of our best agents are making plenty. All right. It's the, it's the agents that don't have enough relationships in the marketplace that are going to struggle. But this is really good for us because what happens in a market like this where listings shrink, right, is there's a few negatives. Okay. One of those negatives is, is agents get really desperate and they start offering all sorts of you know, deals to get business. So they offer cheap commission and free advertising and all that. Okay. I know you're experiencing that right now. So is our business. Competitors who don't have enough business are offering cheap rates to win business and they will win some from it, but look, it's not sustainable. Okay. They'll eventually burn out. These agents, they'll go. All right. They're not successful enough to know their own value uh, in the marketplace and they're not skillful enough to win over a client and prove they're the best agent. Uh, and the, so the only way they can win is by trying to knock down their fee. But it's not sustainable and eventually all of these agents clear out. I'm already seeing it. We're seeing agents clear out left, right and center who are not doing well enough. So this is good for the agents who are gonna stick around, okay? If you're gonna stick around till the next selling season, all right, that's when all of these sellers decide this is time, I can buy, Maybe things need to get a little bit harder to buy. I think, I think, sorry, not harder to buy. Things need to get a little easier to buy, okay? A little harder to sell, all right? Once that happens, all of these sellers that need to buy first, they're going to buy and they're going to sell straight away. And there's going to be a whole lot of listings on the market. And if you're in the market at that time, you're going to clean up. But what you need to do is you need to be making these relationships now. So in this market where there may be not as many listings, you need to be making these relationships with all of these people that have these properties that, that need some service and provide some extra service right now. Okay, this isn't a market where you do the same thing as you did in COVID, all right? You gotta be looking at how are these listings gonna come on the market in, in like a year from now and how they're gonna come to me. Start servicing these people as buyers. Start helping them to look for something, all right? Pick up your socks and do a little extra. You know, find a way to become that agent of choice for these people when this market turns around. And there's other opportunities out there. Okay, I've got agents in my office and what they're doing, right, because it's so hard to buy, is they're leveraging the use of buyer's agents in the marketplace. Okay, so what they're doing is they're, they're finding a seller who needs to sell, but they want to buy first, but they're struggling to buy. So what the agent does is refers this person to a buyer's agent whose role is to help this person buy. There's obviously a fee involved and, and, and they have a business relationship. But that person now has a professional in their corner helping them to buy. And then once they, so you don't have to actually help them to buy. And once that professional buyer's agent, and there's some great ones around, okay? In Brisbane, Cohen Handler, great buyer's agent. PMC, great buyer's agents. Um, there's other ones around. You can refer this person to the buyer's agent. They'll help them buy. And then once they buy, they'll come and sell with you. And not only that, they're sorting out a referral fee between the buyer and the buyer's agency for sending the business over there. There's another opportunity right there. Come on. So you're helping a client out. You're going to get their business later and you're getting a referral fee if you've organized it with the agency. Come on. There's so many opportunities right in front of you guys. This is still a great market. Another way you can find an opportunity is get a relationship with a great finance broker because in this market, this is more important than ever because people don't want to sell without buying first, right? So a lot of sellers... They want to go and buy and have the deal subject to the sale of the house, but they're never going to get a deal that way because there's going to be someone else who's going to buy that property before them with no conditions. All right, so we need to be getting these seller, these potential sellers comfortable with the idea of buying something unconditional and getting their, their house sold really quickly. So get them in touch with a finance broker because a lot of these people are just confused and they don't know how to do anything um, like, like they haven't had someone sit down with them, show them how much equity they have, show them what they could actually buy um, and see what it's actually going to cost them to make this change over. Okay, so um, a, lot, a lot of people just don't know a finance broker and don't know that talking to someone in the finance arena is actually going to help them make this next step forward. And guys, I'll tell you what's going to happen in this market. And this has been happening more and more in the last 10 years is... As listings get shorter and the market gets a bit tighter, 
the biggest agents with the greatest teams are going to win the most, all right? What we're going to start seeing is some lower level agents leave the industry. We're going to see agents that want to stay but aren't doing so well joining bigger teams and bigger teams slurping up all of the business. Okay, this is going to continue to happen. So if you want to be a high performing agent, right, you need to be building a team and you might need to think about whether or not the agency you're in right now is giving you the tools you need to make the best success of your real estate career, okay? Um, if you're not in a great office, not in a great team, and they're not being innovative with the way you work and helping you to grow your team, then you need to find that, all right? Either find another office or go out and do it on your own. You can do it with other models. There's, heat, there's a few out there. Our business plum partners can lead the way and help you do that as well. So have a think about, is this the place I want to be in the next five years with this market, with great agents slurping up all of the business? Do you want to stay the same? Don't get comfortable because getting comfortable is when you get slaughtered. If I was to make a prediction, I personally, I think interest rates are going to go a little higher because buyers aren't scared off enough now. There is too much demand. Uh, there's not enough supply and that balance needs to shift. So I personally think that interest rates are going to go up a little bit more and I, and I think we're going to see eventually in the next two years uh, the amount of buyers uh, in the marketplace is, is going to drop off. But that's good for us, okay? That's a very, very good thing for agents and uh, it's going to give you the chance to refine your skills, change how you do business and... Uh, if you are not in a business that's innovating and not thinking about the market and changing how you do things, then perhaps you need to be somewhere else. Okay, so have a think about that. Is it time for you to join another agency that is, you know, pushing their limits, uh, using new technology, um, you know, or is it time for you to go out on your own and create an opportunity in the marketplace for yourself? Because this is a great market to do that. All right, this is a great market. We're seeing, you know, if you're a high performer. You can do this in this market, all right? If you're earning, let's say, 400,000 plus in GCI, this is the time for you to decide, are you gonna stay where you're at, stay comfortable, and, and just run out the next few years, or are you gonna make the biggest move of your career and make some change? So what do you think, guys? Am I just rambling shit? Do I even know what I'm talking about? Let me know in the comments below where you think this market's going. I don't really know, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just saying stuff that I think's gonna happen, but no one knows. So do you think something different to me? I wanna know, and let's do an episode about that. Thanks for watching. You watch this because you want to get keen. You want to get out there and make the most of it. So let's go. Thank you for tuning into the Get Keen podcast. If today's episode inspired you, please show your support with a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And make sure you subscribe on your favorite platform too. Don't stop there. Join our community of forward thinkers by connecting with me on social media at Dan underscore Lee underscore Plum. I'm looking forward to exploring more strategies and insights with you on your journey to the top. Until next time, keep getting keen.